everyone, Josie here, Life at 50 and Beyond. Thanks for joining me here on my channel. Today I have another Dollar Tree multi-purpose organizer DIY for you all. And I'm so excited to share with you this new product that they are selling at Dollar Tree. Now I got this online because I couldn't find them at any of the stores near me. These are the gold wire baskets and these are the rectangular, the bigger ones that they sell and this is like six units minimum so it is amazing because you don't have to buy in big bulk I'm also going to be using this cooling wire racks these are the smaller ones and they are two in a pack for a dollar I will be using three pairs of that and I'm going to be showing you later that I'm also using the longer or bigger ones for the backing but you can certainly use four packs of the smaller cooling wire racks. Now I'm also going to be using to assemble this my favorite tools <laughs> or materials the zip ties and I got that also from Dollar Tree and also my handy dandy glue gun and my handy dandy Dollar Tree scissors which I will use to cut my zip ties. So let's get started. First I'm going to be assembling my base using one of the gold wire baskets and two pieces of the cooling wire racks. This base will support the whole system together. So my project will have a fixed wire basket and two wire baskets that are not fixed, that can be changed, that can be movable. Now I'm just showing you here that I'm using my assistant here, my <laughs> ceramic camper that I have hold previously and I'm going to be inserting the upper right hand corner of that video if you're interested. I'm using this to support this wire rack so that I can tie it without it falling off. You can also use clamps or binder clips but I find this really helpful to lean on something that is heavy duty that will not topple. So what I'm doing here is I'm just aligning the basket to the bottom part of my wire rack. I position it where it is matching the narrower part of the wire rack. And then I'm going to be tying my zip ties. I'm going to be putting three zip ties here, one on each end and then one at the center, but you can certainly add more zip ties. Now in the interest of time, I am not winding more than once my zip ties. If you want to wind it several times, go ahead and do so, so that you will save your materials as well as make the connections a little bit tougher to break. But like I said, in the interest of time, I'm just doing this as quickly as possible because sometimes my video tends to go longer because I'm also doing the process longer. So I'm just making it a little easier for video purposes. So I've done the two ends and then now I'm going to put the middle part. I'm just going to try to eyeball where the middle is. Whenever I put zip ties, I kind of do it in a diagonal so that it will trap the intersection of the wire of the wire basket and the wire of my cooling wire rack. So here are my first three connections. And let me go ahead and focus it a little closer so that you could see how it looks like. If you notice, this basket isn't really perfectly straight on the sides, so there will be a space here. So that's why I cannot put zip ties on the bottom part of the baskets itself to connect to the bottom wire of my cooling wire rack. So that's why I'm putting the first wires on the top of the basket and then connect it to the wires of the cooling wire rack. I'm going to go ahead and focus this a little bit closer for the benefit of our visually impaired viewers. Now I must apologize because of the focus, I think it may be a little grainy, but at least you could see it a little bit closer as well. So my apologies on the quality whenever I focus closer. So as you could see on my first zip tie here on this other side, again, how I put it diagonally so that no matter what you do, it doesn't slide off because you trap both wires that intersected. So basically I'm just repeating all the steps that I've done on the opposite side and here it is. Now that I'm done with my bottom part of my 
wire shelving unit, I'm going to go ahead and add the upper shelves. To make my upper shelf stronger, I will be doubling up on my cooling wire racks. So I'm going to be putting two on the middle as well as two on the upper shelf. Now if you want to, you can already connect these two shelves together, maybe one on each end before you even connect it to the sides. That way they will not slide off from each other and they are aligned, but I didn't do that so at hindsight I should have done it, but it worked out anyway. So I'm showing you where I'm going to be connecting my middle shelf. There is a middle wire there and I am going to use that as my mark. Okay, so that's where I'm going to be attaching my middle shelf. I've lined up the zip tie on the second shelf to my first shelf or the bottom shelf. I'll be putting one on each side where it intersects. See, it's kind of diagonal so it traps there so it just doesn't slide and it's a little bit more stable that way. And then I'm going to be putting my middle zip tie. And then I'm just going to be repeating the same steps on the opposite side. And I'm going to be doing a little bit of fast motion here since this is just a repetition. Okay, so here's our second or middle shelf connected. And then now I'm going to be putting my third or top shelf. I'm going to also double it up with two wire racks so that it'll be stronger and more stable. For the very top shelf, I will be taking advantage of these two feet here on this side and also the two feet on the opposite side so that my top shelf can sit on them making it more stable. Here's how I'm going to sit my shelf on top. So I'm just going to be connecting my first zip tie again, making sure that all the zip ties are aligned. So the top shelf zip ties lining up with the second shelf zip ties as well as the bottom shelf zip ties. I'm doing the same style of tying my zip ties, making sure that it's in diagonal and then capturing or trapping where the wires intersect. And then since there's no feet at the center middle part of this top shelf, I'm just making sure again that I put a zip tie that is diagonal so that it traps all those wires together. And I'm just going to be repeating the same process on the opposite end, this time in a faster motion. Okay, it's still wobbly. It's because I haven't placed anything at the back. So this is where two more wire racks will be helpful. Got these two wire racks. This one is taller and it doesn't come in two in a pack maybe because of the size. So I'm just going to use two, overlap them and then tie them with my zip ties. I like the fact that it's taller. It will catch my basket or whatever I'm going to put. It will be catching it even if I push it towards the back and it will not be at the risk of falling off. So just line them up with the shelves that I have put in place, making sure that I have the right width that will cover the entire back for the sides not protruding. I'm just going to be putting my zip ties, one on each end. I turn it around so you can have a better view of what I am doing here. 
since these two bigger wires are overlapping, I'm making sure that they are aligned. I'm using six zip ties on each level to connect this backing to each shelf. This is a portion where the two large wire racks are overlapping so that it doesn't slide off like what is happening now. I will put it in place and secure it with a zip tie. So like I said earlier, you can add as much zip ties to make this stable, to make this stand straight, to make this stronger. So feel free to put them anywhere you think that will make this work. So I'm going to do a fast motion again. Okay, so my shelving unit is done. I'm just adding the two wire baskets that are removable. And I can even use other baskets instead of those two. That's why I like them removable. So I'm using these four gold wire baskets that I hold previously, the ones that I purchased online. Minimum of four pieces or four units to purchase not the bigger bulk that you will see often on other items. They fit perfectly here and I like that they line up with the backing, you know, the top of the backing, so it's like perfect there. Let me just demonstrate to you, especially if you're new here to my channel, you've probably seen this before if you're not new to my channel, but the reason why I use my hot glue to reinforce my zip ties is not just to reinforce it so that it will be stable and hold stronger, but also this acts as a protective covering so that those sharp edges created by me cutting or trimming down my zip ties will not cause any injury like scratches or maybe even cuts to anyone who may be accidentally touching or getting close to it. So it's just a protection, especially if you have younger kids with you so that they don't get cut. So again, dual purpose here not just to reinforce my connection, but also to add a protective cover. So it's hitting two birds with one stone, but you can also dull those sharp edges with your nail filer, or you can use sandpaper as well to kind of dull them. Here I'm showing you how I use my Daiso containers. They were only $1.50 each from Daiso, and I can put them on top. I think they're too tall for the middle shelf, but you can combine any other baskets. That's the reason why I like it removable on those two layers or shelves. So you can just mix and match. I have this acrylic container. I also got a Daiso, but Dollar Tree sells them also. They have acrylic containers or makeup organizers. You could probably use this to organize your makeup. And imagine this in your home office so that you can put your incoming and outgoing mail you can use this to organize your printer paper and also envelopes and stationery and other office supplies. I can picture this also in the kitchen. A hot drink station, you know, your coffee station or a tea station, you could put here, organize your tea bags, use some of those smaller containers to kind of corral them. Your K-cups, if you have K-cups, you can put the heavier items like the drinking cups at the bottom. You can even use this as a drying rack in your kitchen. The possibilities are endless. Use this as a craft storage. If you also want to camouflage those zip ties, you can use those gold or silver pens that you can just rub on and then they will just blend in. Or you can spray paint the whole thing to give it a new look, a different color. You can use this in any style. 
you let me know in the comment section down below what you think about this organizer and if you are planning to make one. This is really going to be handy whether you're living in a small space or a big space. And I'm going to be showing you a photo of how I'm using it, but I do have a follow-up video, kind of like a part two on this one, where I'm going to be showing the different ways that you can use this, more samples, so that you can be inspired in using it. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe, and don't forget to click that notification bell icon so that you will not miss any of my new uploads. And I would really appreciate it if you could click like, so that I will know if you like these types of projects, so that I can make more of this in the future. Take care. God bless. Talk to you again on my next video. Bye-bye.